Hello everyone and welcome back to the Duke's Farm. My name is Dennis Duke Wonyala. As always, I'll bring you interesting stories from different farmers. We are not leaving any farmer unreached. We shall reach every corner of this country. Today, we drove roughly around 140 kilometers away from the capital city, Kampala. Kampala is the capital city of Uganda, for those of you who do not know. And we are here in Uganda and I have met with my longtime friend and a farmer, Mr. Hamisi Semanda. Yes. Thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. Finally, nice you've given you. us an opportunity. I can know why you've not been giving us an opportunity because after being here, I see you're doing a lot of work. Yes. How is it so far? Actually, the work is doing well. Mm -hmm. As you know, farming, farming is like a leisure. Okay. It's a place that mm. makes you comfortable. Okay. Yes. I usually prefer people uh, to introduce themselves better so that anybody out there can understand from your own view. Who is Hamis Semanda? Hamis Semanda is a farmer, as per now, but a former AI technician, an artificial inseminator. Ah. So I used to do a lot of animal breeding, like mostly I used to do it in cattle, but now I want also to join and do it myself in goats. Within the goats sector. I, I want to do artificial simulation of goats and even the embryo transfer, but that will be okay. later to come. Now, the fact that, this is a story that amazed me and that's what we're going to talk about in this particular video, but don't forget I have a series of different videos particularly from this gentleman, so keep checking my channel. We want to know the transition, how and when and why do you transition from being just uh, an artificial inseminator, technical person or technician, whatever it is, to now a goat breeder, you're not just a, a mere farmer, you're a breeder yeah. who has been there, done this several yeah. years. When do you say enough is enough or when do you transition? Yeah, actually, I was also a worker, like other people. So I used to work in Zimbabwe. I used to breed the animals at uh, 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 Sembeguya Estates. So I was the general breeder for cows. So, but there was a project r that was running in that farm. And um, there was a project going on for goats. So I also joined the project um, and I started doing the treatment you know, monitoring of the projects. But in the process of doing monitoring of the project, I saw many farmers because we could give animals to the farmers. So we did that. And uh, actually it worked as a trigger for me to think about of uh, goat farming and think of really leaving my job. What made me do that? It was some farmers that we really visited that have never even gone to school their number rose to um, 100 goats. Their number rose to 500 goats. Me adding up some calculations, I found out that these farmers are getting a lot of money. Because we found them with bikes, mm. um, with the motorcycles, those were the rich. Mm. You know, he's showing you a number of animals. He's showing you that I bought this land. So that really um, complicated my head. So I thought about it. I told my friend I used to work with that, you know what? I have to be a farmer, a good farmer. And uh, I decided to start buying land from my salary. Here, I started with around uh, five acres. Then I added on another four acres. Then I, I started. So I mobilized the animals. Uh, we used to give them to the farmers. In my area, you buy two, three, five. Then you give them to the uh, farmers because the farmers wanted us close that's why they gave us land to start mobilizing our goats so when i made 100 i said let me go so i moved i, I came here with 100 goats but of course they were hybrids and um, i also uh, had two males i bought two males which were pure and then i brought them here so i started here with 100 goats Another thing that I did not tell you, gentlemen, we are going to continue with his conversation, is that Mr. Hamisi Semanda has a very thriving YouTube channel. Please go there. Uh, as you can see in this particular picture on the screen, that's his YouTube channel. He uploads very nice content in regards to goat farming, how to manage goats, and how to do literally everything. Let's continue with the discussion. How was your start? Was it a good one? Was, did you face any challenges in your start? 
Uh, the truth is, I think the challenges I went through, those are the challenges that always, you know, scare people mm. to leave their jobs and so on. Me, when I was leaving my job, I didn't even tell my father because I was the last born of my father. And, you know, he loved me so much. I, I couldn't tell him that, Muse, you know what? I'm leaving job to go and do God farming. But I came here. I think on my account I had around two millions or three. Mm -hmm. I had no house here. I, I only made a toilet. And that toilet was a mud toilet, not even blocks. I got transport. I carried my animals from Zimbabwe because that's where uh, the, the projects they were. Mm -hmm. So we reached here. I got a, a manager and um, another one worker. So I brought them here. Um, my manager was sleeping in a, in a, in a yeah. tent. Oh. I bought a tent and I was too devoted because I knew that I would get money. Out of it. After all, the other farmers, the other side, they didn't know anything about animal health and anything, but they could achieve all that. So I because said, of your help, because meanwhile. of my help, mm. because I was the brain, you know, animals get issues, what, what, you drive and go there, bikes and everything. So I was quite sure that I can uh, really achieve. So my manager used to sleep under the tent. I had no money, but still I had many people that could call me to go and help them on their farms, you know, because they knew me. I could go do breeding, uh, construction of the farms. I could get some little money still, mm. like maybe 200,000, uh, you know, like that. I could get some money to eat. Mm -hmm. Then um, animals also continued to rip, uh, uh, multiplying. And um, the first loads, uh, that is after like seven months, I received uh, 170 kids. Because, you know, in my selection, I selected many animals and uh, they were all very nice animals, super nice hybrids. Because I knew what I wanted and I could get it from the project from my uh, outgrowers. So, my animals, the first lot, they produced 170 kids out of 100. And you know, I was very attentive because every after a week, even in the middle of the week, I could drive and come here. Because that was my last resort. I couldn't want to go back to, you know, search for a job. Mm. So what we did... Which year was that meanwhile? That is, uh, was it 2009? Okay. Uh, 2009 there, because now it's four years. This farm has made four years this year mm. in August. So that's about 2019? That's, yeah, yeah. That's 2019, okay. could be there. Okay. Yeah, I think that was 2019. So, um, what we did, um, we produced those kids, and I told my manager, we have to be very, very attentive. So we concentrated more, and we managed the animals more, mm. such that we don't lose. And actually, for your information, we only lost like all two kids, and they were oppressed in the mother's section. And, you know, their immunity lowered and they died. So that is how it happened. And I lost two kids. So, my, because we had a lot of grass here, and the goats were really very nice, my goats got bred after like over one month or one and a half. Then after another six months, actually there were five months and something, I received another 200 kids. Then I said yes. Now the houses... I had to adjust because I'd increased the number. And remember when I was starting, I started like a small house because I had a small number of animals. Mm -hmm. Now the guy came here and he bought, um, actually he bought, uh, uh, was it 300 goats? He was from Western Uganda, actually he was taking them to Rwanda. Mm -hmm. He bought 300 <coughs> nannies. Some were eight months, some were nine, some were uh, five months. So we combined all of them. That was in one and a half months. Sorry, one and a half years. years. Mm -hmm. So I sold 300 kids and I got 120 million. That was my first big man on the account. I came back here and uh, started building the houses. I built for a manager, I built for his assistant and also built on the other house mm. and built the winner's section, actually the male section. Yes. I also built it. I also built the female winner's section and I stayed with money. Then there is a, a farmer who sold me a whole farm. He said, Hamisi, I'm also going to buy land, buy all my animals. So I went and paid him on average. Actually, I bought around over 300, around 400 goats. 
but of course they were not all old mm. so he only costed me the big old goats mm. and uh, these kids he never minded about them so i brought all the animals here around 400 of them so the money i got i reinvested it into the project and then it started producing more so since then my account started being happy because now the animals increased i left with some dollars on my account so i started living a better life since then those animals produced and then uh, many people started coming and picking more goats so in my mind i got to understand that i don't have to have hard cash my money is supposed to be in animals and now i even have it in my mind that every money i have it is supposed to be a living money what an inspiring interesting story that is so um as we wind up that particular segment of how you transition from here to there uh, do you did you at one time regret leaving your job for this no actually i never regretted because i was too devoted mm. i did want to go back to that job but i also wanted to live a better life you know me i'm a hustler mm. even when i was uh, when i was at my workplace uh, and what i want your followers to understand is that uh, uh, if you want to achieve or to be somewhere don't say that i can't do this job be vigorous me when i used to be at my my workplace I was a driver, I was, uh, I was, uh, I was uh, a, a, a technician, I was uh, a, a medical person, I was everything. Mm. Because me, I could even, actually I was even a marketeer. Mm. So I used to do a lot of things. I used to do a lot of things. So I never regretted to go back. Why? Because when I came here, um, I had freedom. You know those calls? Because me, I used to stay in Zimbabwe. Mm. But on my way back home, they could call me Hamisi, you have you auditors, have mm. then I could turn from there and then. So, um, you literally had no control over yourself. No, 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 no. You were always on like on a remote. Choop. That's it. Shh. Shh. So I could come to my home mm. in midnight and then early morning I'm leaving. Sometimes I could even spend three months without going home. Without going <clears> home. <throat> wow. You get it? So that was the thing. So when I decided and say, let me leave, Whichever I have, mm. I will be with what I can. Okay. So I never regretted to go back. I just said, let me move mm. forward okay. and my own. As you wind up, somebody who is, you know, having thoughts of either they should leave, they shouldn't leave. When should I leave? How should I leave? What advice do you give, do you give them? The truth is, you've seen even my beginning was all about having capital. I can't lie to you or advise you that you leave the job when you have no capital. My plan or my advice or my everything is get the money. You know, if you get the money whenever you get it from maybe from your work, make sure that you invest that money before you think about of going. Why? Because there is some challenges that we meet on the way. You get it? If me, I had no simple backup of maybe going back to the fields, mm -hmm. get some Getting little some money that could there. make me go there and there, mm -hmm. you would find that Hamis would be selling some of the animals I brought to survive. You get it? My advice to the people that wants to leave the jobs, you can never be rich if you're still working under someone. You'll be an average person. An average person having a home, having kids at school, you have a car to drive and fuel. That's it. But that doesn't mean that you're rich. And you're not even counted, not even close to people who are rich. If you want to be rich, what you have to do, one, mobilize your capital. Invest your money before you leave the job. Get all the challenges when you're still at the job. Mm. Because the money you put in, if you make a mistake, it will vanish. If that money vanishes, you have somewhere you can starve and pick more. Mm. Then you add in. So my advice is start investing on the little money that you have. Mm. When your project stands and it can support you, then you can don't go. turn, okay. but just move forward and go. Okay. Because you're going towards your happiness. Interesting. Yes. This was the first segment that we've had with Mr. Hamis Semanda. Don't forget to follow his YouTube channel. 
Hamis Semanda, right? Yes. Uh, he's, he does quite amazing content. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. My name is Dennis Duke Wanyala. See you in the next episode.